In 2013, Norwich City Council successfully applied for a Cycle City Ambition Grant from the government to improve cycling infrastructure. In Norwich, the cycle routes, otherwise known as pedalways, are assigned colours. The pink pedalway, which runs from Hartsey's in the east through the city to the hospital in the west, was the first project under the grant. The western section of the Pink Pedalway is a very important cycling route in Norwich, where it serves high employment areas like the University of East Anglia, the hospital, the research park, as well as a large local school. The City Council website promised that between 2013 and 2015, the streets, paths and junctions of the Pink Pedalway will be redesigned in consultation with the public, making it a high quality, safe route that can be ridden confidently by everyone. As the last section of the route before the UEA, the Avenues is most likely the busiest cycling street in the city, indeed all of Norfolk. Not only do large numbers of people on bikes use it, but also a lot of motorised traffic, especially at peak times. So it was important to provide a high quality route, not only to improve the safety of cyclists, but also to encourage more people to use bikes. After a long period of consultations and several proposals, a plan was announced which featured two dedicated hybrid cycle tracks, one on each side of the road, and it had the potential to become a showcase scheme and study case for future projects. But it was not to be. At the last moment and without any consultation, the scheme was dropped and something very different was produced. There were to be no dedicated hybrid cycle tracks, just white paint and speed humps. The speed humps were paid for using the cycle provision money, of course. The space allocated to motor traffic is only one lane wide, despite the road being two-way and carrying large double-decker buses. It looks adequate when there isn't much traffic around, although at times like this there really isn't a problem anyway. There are a few features worth mentioning. The red asphalt and speed tables on the junctions with side roads give a clearly marked cycle priority, although why the rest of the cycle lane isn't red as well is a mystery. The speed humps, although effective at reducing traffic speeds, are not a feature needed or wanted for cycling. Many cyclists prefer to ride around them close to the kerb on what is effectively a narrow gutter. Wooden bollards close to the edge of the road at these points is also not a very cycle friendly feature, especially when they've been knocked over. From a driver's perspective it's clear why this arrangement doesn't work. Traffic has to drive in the cycle lane in order to pass oncoming traffic. At busy times the cycle facility simply ceases to exist. Busy times of course are when it's needed most. At peak commuting times it becomes a real mess. The only way the two-way traffic can pass is for vehicles to drive in the cycle lanes and so this design breaks down. There is, in effect, no cycle facility at peak times. Remember, not only is this a major commuting route to the UEA, the hospital and research park, but also to the City Academy School. Children are supposed to be cycling along here. Unsurprisingly, not many do. When a vehicle parks in the cycle lane, which is a common occurrence, the situation becomes chaotic and very dangerous, with cyclists caught up in weaving traffic. Some cyclists are lulled into a false sense of security by the illusion of a protected cycle route or perhaps by the sheer number of fellow cyclists, but in truth the white lines offer no protection from the traffic. Sometimes the cycle lane is blocked and cyclists take to the nearby path to find a way forward. This just shows how useless this scheme is. After dark, the avenues is even worse. The whole point of the new scheme is to provide a safe and convenient route for cyclists. Clearly this has not been achieved with this botch scheme. So much for the high quality, safe route that can be ridden confidently by everybody they promised. 20 years ago a cycle path was built alongside of the avenues and it's still there. The path is substandard, narrow and used as a footway by many pedestrians, but it could have been upgraded. 
A third-rate connection across the speed table to the cycle route on the other side of Blue Bar Road was added as part of the new scheme, but it's essentially unfriendly to cyclists who expect to stop not only for traffic on Blue Bar Road, but also for pedestrians on the path it crosses. Elsewhere, cyclists are expected to give way at side streets. All this makes the cycle track substandard and much slower to use in the road, but it is safer. These junctions were to have been improved during the works, but it didn't happen for some reason. With a little thought, the cycle path could have been upgraded to a proper cycleway. It needs curves to delineate it from the footpath and proper crossings at the junctions, but it would have been wide enough for a one-way inbound cycle track. The reason given by the City Council for not building the planned segregated cycle tracks was because of tree roots. The only way to prevent the work from damaging tree roots would be to dig the paths by hand, they said, which would make the cost of the scheme prohibitive. However, in the leaflet produced following the public consultation, it was written, carriageway level would be raised to enable cycle tracks to be built on the verge without digging and damaging tree roots. <laughs> 